women belong below stairs. So the women used to have to go down here. Oh, and all this green and orange glass used to be all the way around. But over the years, licensees used to buy beer in, and instead of putting it down the drop, yeah. he bounced it down the bleeding steps <laughs> and broke all the glass and broke three of the granite steps. Oh, so so we ended up we ended up with concrete steps. Now you're tall. Yeah. You're a bit shorter, but it is low down here, so duck. Okay. And once you get down this corner, this is where you've got to duck. <laughs> now, <clears throat> just a storage cupboard now for paint stores, and we these are all recycled in cans, aluminium cans that we give to one of the charities that come over. I think it's Clare House. Yeah. But this is where the women used to have to come down to go oh, to the toilet. Yeah. yeah. And all this green glass used to go around and everything with the orange glass and everything. I see. But could you imagine walking down those steps, down steps yeah, with, with a torch, uh, with yeah, a candle or the, an oil lamp? Yeah. And then the, big dresses that they used to wear. Yeah. Drink. Big crinoline and dresses. Yeah. yeah. Right. Doc. That used to just be a storage room, but the door's been took away since. Right. There's our beer cellar. Wow. It's the part I look after. Sound? So I, I look after all the real ales. I order all the lagers and everything in. Amazing, isn't it? And up till a few years back, we were allowed to filter back. Yeah. But, like, on there we have two habits on the go. When that was nearly empty, I could take that off, yeah. connect it to that one, and then when that went down a bit, I could tilt that, drain it into a bucket and filter it back into the next one. Uh -huh. Well, we're not allowed to do you that anymore. can't no do it now, no. So I have to start using the original tilt sticks that we have. And the idea with these are, when it gets down, as the beer gets down, you feel the weight of it. And very carefully, you tilt it up like that, yeah. and put that behind. I want it, yeah. Tilt it. So it's a forward, while it's, yeah. Because while it's set, set, set like that on this stillage, in the belly of the barrel, it's still about a gallon and a half of beer. So this is still the original way that they used to do it yeah. years ago? And them stillages have been there for about So you're not wasting years. that beer at the back, you're bringing it forward? Bring it forward I see, so, yeah. Yeah, so there's no wastage, no wallage. Brilliant. And this one, this, this is where the drop is. That's our drop. And it's still oh, got the original yeah. rails. Yeah. Where they used to load the hogsheads down. Them big 54 gallons. But the biggest one we get now is a 22 because they, they've done away with the, the actual barrel which is 36 gallon and the hogsheads. And until the refurb two years ago, where you see the, the mark there where the water is, yeah. they actually filled that in with concrete because it had actually worn away and it was about 18 inches deep there. With dropping the barrels? Dropping the barrels and the belly of the barrel actually wore all the concrete away. Ooh. So what was this part here at? Is that just like a... Uh, it was just storage where storage. you used to store um, cases. No, the, you used to get the wooden cases yeah. of beer, yeah. bottles of beer and that. You'd stack them all in there and stuff like that to keep it down here because it was cool. Amazing, isn't it? And for a pub that's over 160 years old, I do my best with the cellar as much as I can. But as you can see, it's actually built on a sandstone bedrock. That's right, so it's not a thing. So it's all original, it's not been changed? No. Now, in the when Peter Kavanagh had it, he passed away in 1950. His two sons took it over. One was a silent partner and one was um, done all the work and the silent plan after a couple of years started getting greedy and wanted more money and Peter Kavanagh went, nah you're not on. He said, pull your, thing, pull your finger out, do a bit of work and then you can have more money and he said no. So in the end he said right I'm selling it. So they sold it to Telly, Joshua Telly and Sons. So have you ever had any uh, weird, weird goings on when you've been down here Art? Like, oh, pick stuff up yeah? Yeah. yeah. Ah, you put stuff down and you go, it's gone. 
the lady was telling me about the, uh, the, the, the beer napkin that she put down down here one day. Oh, and I went missing for weeks and then she yeah. came down here and I came back. Yeah. Sparklers upstairs off the, off the beer pumps. Yeah. Took off the night before, went missing, never found them. To this day we've never found them. So you, you do believe that there's some activity in the pub? There's something going on, but we don't know what. Yeah. But as I said, it's the living you worry about, like I said. Yeah, yeah. can't hurt you. <laughs> but, as I say, so, when they sold the pub to Joshua Telly in the 60s, number four next door became available. So they bought number four and knocked it through. Knocked it through, yeah. And then, in the late 60s, beginning of the 70s, number six became available. So they knocked it through even further. And that's when they changed the name of the pub from... Because when Peter Cavanagh changed, when he redesigned it in 1911, he changed the name from the Liver Hotel to the Grapes. And then it was changed from the Grapes to Peter Cavanagh's to commemorate Peter Cavanagh being the longest serving licensee in the city, 53 years. Ooh. And I think he still holds that, that record. Yeah, yeah. So that's the seller for number four. Because it goes right through. Then we have to sell it for number six. Wow. All so, so we do have but we have all the beer pumps in here, that's why we have to keep yeah. the door closed. We store our glasses here as well. And that's just a load of shite stored up there. <laughs> Amazing. Because if this if the heat of air goes out there, it starts spoiling all the beers. Yeah. That's why we have to keep the have to keep the cellar cold. And I say that it's just the last day glasses. Yeah, it's quite a big seller. My license premises in 1849. In 1897, an Irish fella called Peter Kavanagh took it over. And when he took it over, the pub was called the, the Live Hotel. And Peter Kavanagh used to love, we call him. Cavana, the Irish call him Cavana. He used to love designing things and inventing things. And he actually designed the spring mechanisms on the seats on the old trams. And by 1911, he'd made a few oh. bob. And he wanted to redesign the pub. So along with his architect, because he was an Irish immigrant, he loved the maritime history of the city. So he actually designed the interior of the pub rounded like this. Like the ship, like the cabins off the old galleons. And that's why on these windows here we have the lighthouse, the galleon in full sail, and the cross doors. Now, these windows, he had them commissioned, and they were, they were done by a master craftsman called William English. And he was a master craftsman, because he actually, William English actually had done the leather light windows at Worcester Cathedral. Now, the gargoyles, what we call the gargoyles under the shelves, the carvings, he had them commissioned. And they were done by the master craftsman who done all the uh, carvings in the Anglican Cathedral. So these are all original and carvings? They, yeah, and they were actually caricatures of his customers. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing, there were some ugly buggers in them days. <laughs> but he had a sense of humour, Peter Kavanagh, because at the end of each bench, he had a caricature of himself. Oh, what? Now, in 1929, he had a fella drinking in here called Eric Harold Macbeth Robinson, Scottish fella. And when he moved down from Scotland, he dropped the Harold Macbeth part of his name, and everyone just knew him as Eric Robinson. And he married a Liverpool girl who was a nurse. And the story goes, he ran for slate with Peter Kavanagh, couldn't afford to pay it. And he said to Peter Kavanagh, look, any chance of me being able to paint your pub to pay off some of the debt? And Peter Kavanagh was a very charitable person because he was actually on four or five different church charities around the area, as well as being an alderman of the city. And he went, oh, okay then, expecting him to come in with his emulsion and his distemper. And he didn't. He come in with his oils and canvas, and he done these. And these are scenes from the Pickwick Papers, Charles Dickens. Oh. Now, the faces of the fellas in the portraits, they're the faces of Peter Kavanagh's customers. And if you look, you can actually marry some of them up with some of the gargoyles. Oh, yeah. And the little fat fella sliding across the ice, that's Mr. Pickwick. Yeah. The fella stood behind him with the top hat on. That's the face of Peter Kavanagh. And the fella stood in the background there with the top hat and looking sad and sullen. 
is the face of the artist because he's not getting paid for it. Because oh. <laughs> he's already drank his beer. Wow. Oh. Now, getting back to designing things and inventing things, the tables, Peter Kavanagh actually designed them and held a patent on them. Yeah. And he designed them to be used on a ship. That's why they bolted to the floor. And the idea was, whoops, move that down a minute. The idea was, if you're on a ship and you spilt your drink, it would run down there and go into there. Go into there, yeah. And he thought to himself, safety conscious, that's true. Yeah. So there's always fluid there to put your cigarette out. Oh. But then he goes, whoa, 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 hang on. What happens if you smoke a cigar or you smoke a pipe? You end up with your cigar sticking up there or a mound of hot ash from your pipe. So what he did, put he put two little up. cups. Yeah. And the idea was, you stub your cigar out, you knock your pipe out and carefully you put your foot on it and smother it. Oh. Now when he had the pub, he was a sexist and he was a racist. Yeah. If you weren't white, you were not allowed in this pub. Asian, black, Chinese, mixed race, all skin, you weren't allowed in. If you were a female, you weren't allowed in. Unless you were accompanied by a gentleman. And only with his special permission were the women allowed to sit in this snub or the back snub. So on these tables you put a shelf underneath, because that was for the lady's handbag. Because in them days they carried a handbag, not like the sports bag now with half yeah. a ton of sand and cement. Yeah. I mean the makeup in. Yeah. Now, to enter the ashtray, what you do is you find the bolt, you til tilt it up. And that. Oh, that's good, isn't it? That's the Wow. Oh, brilliant. Now, up until the late 60s, he incorporated belt pushes in the middle. Up until the late 60s, there used to be a board behind the bar. Yeah. And when you sat in here, you could press that, and the staff would come out and serve you at the table. <laughs> don't do that now. <laughs> Self service, you get your own. We don't do waiter service no more. Yeah, and the only other place you'll find these tables is at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Oh. And no, not on the Titanic. So but these actually, are, they are, they are the original tables? The original right? tables. Oh. They actually use some of the same design tables on these in some of the state rooms on the Lusitania. Oh. Which was torpedoed off the coast of Ireland during the First World War. Brilliant. So it's true that they had uh, Hitler in here as well, aren't they? Allegedly, he sat over there drinking his arm. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's supposed to have been Maybrick as well, weren't it? He's supposed to have passed through here. I think so, yeah. yeah. I don't know much about him. but. Hitler, he, the story went with him, his sister who lived over the road in Upper Parliament Street, she sent money over for his brother, for her brother to come over, not Hitler. Yeah, oh why not? Not Adolf, yeah. the other brother. And apparently Adolf pinched the money and bought the ticket and come over. over. Yeah. Oh, amazing. And he was over here for quite a while apparently, and he used to love coming in here and sitting over there and drinking his half a pint of bitter. Oh, brilliant. Apparently he was doing uh, artistry around here at the time as well, wasn't he? Yeah, he, he did. He'd done a lot of artistry. Yeah. Well, as I say, when Eric Robinson done these, Eric Robinson was actually an artist of note. He actually exhibited at the Royal Academy in London, as well as Norway, Sweden, Denmark and America. Well, so you can tell by the, uh, the way they've done as well, can about, about 17 years ago, Rita got people in from the Walker Art Gallery and from the Tate to see if she could get a grant to help restore them. Yeah, yeah. And they turned around and said, no, the cost of restoration far outweighs what they're worth. Because oh. they, they quoted something like £100 per square inch for restoration, which is a shame. But when Rita, who's the licensee now, when she took it over, all this wooden paint work, all this wooden work here was all painted black. Same as the ceiling. But also back to the and she got a couple of local lads in and it took them literally months to strip it all back down and bring it all up because it's all English oak. Yeah, yeah. And while she was while they were doing it, they come across these. There's a copper beaten there. And there's a copper beaten there. And no one no one knew they did because they painted black, no one had seen it for donkey's years. And they're actually they're actually panel beatings of the carvings either side of the fireplace. Yeah. Oh, I can see you. Yeah. Them years ago, you remember the old round ones? Yeah. I used to get them down, clean them for me grandma. Now yeah. they were quite heavy. You got like four chains on them. Yeah, but 
Yeah, yeah but they were all glass. Yeah. They're all held in by that's all lead that's holding them in. Ooh. Honestly, way a bloody tool. Yeah. Does takes two people to hold them. Well, one takes the bars out. <laughs> Sorry, he's just dropping beer down the cellar. Who were they commissioned by? Did you say? I don't know who done them, but he had them commissioned and they were done. And about twelve years ago, they were valued at between four and six thousand pound each. Wow, they're beautiful. Because they've still got the crown round the top. Mm. No. Because normally you start off there, work your way down there. When you're there, you're at these poppy clogs. <laughs> <laughs> on those windows, on that window there, he incorporates David Johnson's biplane. Oh, so you can see that, yeah. First woman to fly the Atlantic. Right, come into the back, snug. Yeah? Of the old lady down Gin Lane. Yeah. And that's it behind the door there, over there, beside the door. Oh, yeah. And the actual drawings that Eric Robinson used for these are held by the Walker Art Gallery in town. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now, most of his clientele were all the money people and the educated people who lived in these houses. Yeah. And Edgerton Street was actually, the houses up at Edgerton Street, they were actually built as servants' quarters for the people who work in these big houses. So when he when he, when he had these windows put in, he incorporated the Oxford and Cambridge coat of arms. Yeah, yeah. And in 1897, he was still the odd stage coach horses going along. And because he loved things mechanical, he incorporated Stevenson's rocket. That's the one that killed, uh, what you call it? Yeah. The, the father and what you call it? Yeah, Hutchinson, yeah. yeah, cut his legs off. Right. Sorry. Now in 1913, he bought a piece of big iron at auction this and the piece in the front snug as part of a flanged wheel oh yeah and allegedly it's part of a wheel of the prototype of Stevenson's rocket wheel wow. wheel that big iron oh and a couple of years later he had the little brass bits put on as embellishments so if we ever see anyone walking out with a really severe limp we go oi put our bender back <laughs> <laughs> right I'll just put a couple of lights on it's all it's been a wheel car there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's every little thing in here. Like the likes of these tables. <laughs> yeah, but you can't take some of the pictures or something like that. I've got some on here for you. Ooh, right. I've just seen loads of orbs then. Now, when Peter Cabin had the pub, this used to be the gents toilet. Yeah. It's now the cleaning cupboard, but we still have the original urinals. Oh, wow. The original tile bricks and the original Art Deco glass. Wow, well, that's nice, isn't it? That's good, doesn't it? Well, I'd say it's the cleaning cupboard now. Amazing. Just got a thing of the urinals. Look at them there, they are horrible. And that's where the fellas went for the number two. Oh, yeah. And the actual door is still there. Hanging up on the hinges, Weird. but because of the what used to be the central heating, sh yeah. that's A, B, C, and D. But it got vandalised over the years, so they ended up taking it out, putting, using it as for storage of the bar towels. Mm -hmm. Now, when Peter Kavanagh had the pub, he loved his, his customers loved lock-ins. Yeah. So what he used to do, he'd have a lock-in, so he incorporated the back door there. So, because all his, all, all his customers, would, I'd say the educated people, the money people, top police officers and solicitors and judges and barristers and all of that. Yeah. When, the, when the sergeants used to knock on the front door, he'd open this and he'd just scatter up the entry. Because oh, that's yeah. straight out to the entry. Now, that's where Rita lives upstairs. Oh, yeah. And only for the carpet, he incorporated that. Yeah. And he'd slide it across and lock it because he didn't want his children mixing with the with drunken the, with people the downstairs. Hotel, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, can we start that again, please? Because I missed it. I'll get you on the other side. <laughs> no, I don't like being on video. Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll just put it on the windows then. Yeah, so the three mirrors, there's three more leaded light windows behind them. Yeah. Because we've got the Oxford and Cambridge coat of arms there. There's the coaching horses and the Stevenson's rockets. 
and then there's Amy Johnson's bike plane, which is the fourth window there. Yeah. And we thought, well, there must be something on them windows. And a few years back, Rita got the outside of the pub painted, and the painter actually managed to undo the shutters, because there's shutters on them windows. And there are three leather light windows, because we thought, well, why have they got the Oxford and Cambridge coat of arms? That's all you So, on these two here, we've got St Andrews and Trinity College. Oh. Because they were the four seats of learning. That's all you St Andrews, Scotland, Trinity, Ireland, and Oxford and Cambridge. And on this one here, it's a chitty chitty bang bang car, ah. only without the wings. Oh. <gasps> yeah. That's all you And I actually took a photograph of them when the shutters were open and then I lost my bloody phone. Oh. So I haven't got a photograph of them no more. That was a shame, was it? Yeah. Now, when he designed the place, if you look above the ship, you'll see a diamond shaped tile. Yeah. You know, the characters of Peter Cameron. Sure yeah. It's on a little door. Yeah. And there's a little door there above the clock. Oh. He told his staff and customers inspection panels, load of bollocks. <laughs> when he was in his bedroom and that was open, he could hear everything whoa, that the staff whoa, whoa, whoa. were talking about. Oh, so when the staff was slagging him off, he'd come down and he was sacked. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and when he when this was open and he was stood in his hallway upstairs, he could hear everything that the money people were talking about, the stocks and shares and what they were going to sell and what they were going to buy. So he was like Del Boy, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. <laughs> that was cool, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And Rita now, she's the licensee. If you've never met her. Yes, she is. We have, we have, we have yes, yeah. she is. She, she, she told us about that. She yeah. sat for six hours modelling that. <laughs> and the sculptor even got the wart on her nose spot on. And then about eight, nine years ago, she went and had it removed with laser surgery. And if you look at the front of her nose now, you can't even see the scar. Is because that we're it? staff and we love it. We put that up there for her. <laughs> We just stretch limo. <laughs> the big broomstick. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah, Rita stretch limo. Where? Broomstick. Where the yellow sign is? See the sign. <laughs> Rita stretch limo. Oh. The broomstick. Because she's a witch. Yeah. <laughs> I call her all sorts. What's the sound? The funniest one was a few years back. I've been watching this scientific program on the telly and I come in. She was downstairs and said to her, Do us your favour, Rita. Let the top of my head. She's going, What? That's the way the back of the bar used to be. Oh, is it? Yeah. Wow. Oh, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah.